Well, hello, hello, hello. It's January 2023 and I'm absolutely delighted. Today I was able to um, go and collect my Daphne's diary for this year. So we're looking at this lovely one with this sort of a snow, wintry themed cover. And if we have a look at the top here, it's number one, 2023. So I'm really, really excited to be able to share this with you. I confess I have had a sneak preview but it is all good because I'm able to share a few other things with you at the same time. So looking at the cover with its lovely sort of soft backgrounds, it would make a lovely cover on its own. And I love the gentleness of the colours and um, the relevance to obviously where we are in the Northern Hemisphere with winter at the moment. Um, then we've got these lovely floral images and these which would make other lovely little tags or maybe faux postage stamps, really gorgeous. I must miss a page. Okay, so this is one of my favorite go-to kind of pages because there's just a wealth of stuff on here. I hope you can see everything. Let me just see if I've got everything in the frame. The pages are quite big, so it's quite difficult. Okay, so I always take the little numbers out and sometimes these little words if necessary, but I will often use some of these little images on their own to cut out. But I do find that this page normally has lots of stuff that you can actually use, um, including the text. Okay, this one. Okay, so there are a couple of themes that run through Daphne's diary. Most of the time there's gardening and fruit and vegetables and cooking. There's usually things to do with creativity and art. So paint brushes, paints, um, woodwork, various crafts. Um, and recipes and things so you can collect some of these things lovely floral images lovely lovely sort of watercolors for the little um, nighties and petticoats and things hanging up there plenty to fussy cut on these pages but don't discard these backgrounds because you can get a lot out of a small background so for argument's sake I could quite easily out of one of these small pieces maybe make a shorter tag um, that I could put a sentiment onto or even here and just by having a paper that's not plain, that's got a bit of texture or a bit of a slightly different colour to what you've got in your stash, um, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Here's a page that's pretty relevant at the moment, being winter. We're making bird feeders at work. I work on a farm and um, our wildlife really does suffer when it gets cold. And in fact, we're expecting snow tonight. So um, I saw this with great glee. <laughs> However... The recipe says here pine cone string, some solid coconut oil and mixed bird seed. And if I can give you my two cents worth, the coconut oil does melt on a warm day and it doesn't have to be particularly warm for it to melt. So I would recommend that you take some lard mixed with a bit of peanut butter and then if you put your seeds onto a saucer and take a teaspoon of lard and mash it in there till it's quite sort of concentrated then you'll find it a whole lot easier to actually do these pressed pine cones we normally just take the teaspoon which has the bird seed mixture on and press it into the pine cone makes it easier these ones when you're working on the toilet rolls they're lovely for the birds because they can actually stand on them but um, it's very difficult to get coconut oil and the lard to stick on here so I would use peanut butter as the base there we have made bird feeders just using cups like this and then we've actually um, glued on and supported with a bit of twine some twigs that come out so that there was something to stand on but I love this idea that it's actually a little bird bath as well but as I say here, don't forget, birds shouldn't take a bath when the temperature falls below zero, as it will cause their wings to freeze. So I wouldn't fill it up in water. Love the illustrations of the birds, and I love the robins here in the UK. They are so tiny, they're only about this size, whereas in South Africa, our Cape robin is quite substantially bigger. But um, having a lovely time watching the wildlife. I walk down the road every morning to the farm, and there's a hawthorn hedge, and the little nests are there, the tiny little birds, just a joy. Um, right, so lovely colours, lots of text, cooking themed things, some nice ideas to do Valentine's um, outings and treats. Right, this has got lovely imagery. Okay, so here you've got this lovely row of thimbles, and I must say I did used to collect thimbles in South Africa. I don't have as many now because I've had to scale down. But here you've also got lovely borders. And from a previous magazine, what I did with the borders is I don't throw them away. 
um, I would use maybe something like one of those borders as the backing for a little tuck spot like that just so that it's a bit more interesting or you could take a border and a piece of scrapbook paper and glue it like that and perhaps make something else with that here's one that I've already done just glued that on I would probably trim that there so this could be stuck onto yet another piece of card just to give it a bit more stability and then of course you could use these as journal cards and pop them into a little tuck spot like that so you've got a few options there then if we have a look over at the next page you've got some lovely ideas of making fizzy bath bombs I did teach people how to do this and I taught them how to make soap from scratch as well for, so what they call farmhouse soap and we had a lot of fun doing that um, we used to sometimes use fancy shaped ice cubes to make mini ones because the kids always just wanted to use them <laughs> um, but they're pretty easy some basic ingredients from your kitchen cupboard for those but they're lovely to make as a quick present um, this is just a lovely set of images you've got a lot of themes of leaves and blue plates and things like that um, really lovely love this door just would be a lovely view to have to look out this is a converted barn or a farmhouse of some sort back in South Africa and this is a very typical South African style of decorating where they've painted with whitewash over the um, original stones and just done basically cement floors that have been painted okay this page is just full of lovely goodies that you could use um, quite a lot that you could put onto tags these little things would be nice little things to embellish various items with um, and then the little images and frames like that I always find could be useful for postage stamps aha look at this lovely little tag so you could write on there but you could also by the same token cut a little picture to go on there lovely little florals and this one here we have some fruit on there so you've got lovely images that you can use and these bits in between if you just take your craft punches and start punching out shapes or cutting strips um, maybe using it as a backing for a tag of or, or sorry not a tag a little postage stamp you'll find that you'll use a lot of that mosaics really really nice to to do if you look at this background here you'll see that it's just been a watercolor painted mosaic I used craft foam that I cut into blocks to actually make a mosaic stamp when I was teaching and that was very useful so it gave a similar effect and we have been making some little mosaic bumblebee balls at work so we've just been using a saucer and we've been popping those little glass pebbles that have the flat backs on them and some mosaic tiles and they really do look beautiful but this is a lovely way to use up broken pieces of china especially those from that favorite cup or tea set that you can't bear to throw away but is beyond repair um, make it into something new and beautiful okay here's a lovely idea to do a little bit of marbling they're using nail varnish and I don't know that I would actually have done it in such a beautiful bowl because I really like that bowl but um, if you float something that is oil-based color on top of something that's water the color floats and you can mix it and it is a very um, Oh, it's just, what's the right word a naive way of doing marbling it's not using the traditional tools but it is great fun I remember taking um, those little model paints that you use for painting airplanes and things um, and sprinkling them onto water with my children and their friends and we used cat litter trays just to put the water in and then we decorated envelopes and stuff we had marvelous fun we had the whole garage and strings and letters and things hanging from there so they really looked gorgeous lovely way just to use one of these drip trays a few extra holes you've got a nice vase we've got a little string container very very I think just nice easy functional gifts that you can actually make um, yeah some lovely images what a nice picture to color in as well all right here's some felting okay so felting is something that I've done in South Africa um, we have a lot of merino wool there which is a type of sheep and they're quite nice and fluffy and there's a whole sort of felting guild there as I'm sure there is in most parts of the world you can do two different types of felting you can do what they're doing here which is called wet felting where you take wet your hands and you take wool and a little bit of soap and you rub things together you could either do it flat on a table by laying colors and kind of building up a picture or you could roll them in balls like this to um, make beads but you can also do what is known as needle felting 
and for the needle felting you get these really really sharp needles and when I say that they're sharp I mean really sharp the ends of them you can't really see with the naked eye but they've got little barbs on them and they do somehow fit into this holder I haven't figured that out um, I just use oh hang on maybe I'm being a bit silly anyway I'll play with that another day um, I just usually use them on their own and what you would do with this would take a nice big thick piece of foam like bath sponge and if you were laying your felt down there you'd put your felt on there and with your needle and you would dab into it. The points break fairly easily so you don't want to actually be too difficult with that and you don't want to prick yourself if you can avoid it because it's really really sharp but these are available on the internet and they're fairly reasonably priced and they're great fun. Loads and loads and loads of ideas for needle felting and those people who've mastered the art do the most incredible things. They can do a lifelike doll that just looks like a real baby or they could do the most beautiful animals. So the colours are amazing. Um, normally if you were doing a bead I would have said use some of the white wool um, just to use as the core of your, of your bead so that you're not wasting all the colours and then just wrap the colours around them. But they do look magnificent when they're done and I've seen a lot of that in South Africa. Um, Okay, this is just a, a, a food ideas kind of pro page and two, but you've got lovely images here. You've got lots of little bits of colors and things that you can cut out. Um, here again, you've got a sort of grid pattern where you could use that for something else, um, especially with words, more of your textures and your patterns. So everything in a frame can be made into something. So let's see here. Um, I made some tags, I made this little kitty cat, that was out of a previous magazine that had a frame, just on a piece of scrapbook paper. Um, there was just a little food item about that sort of size that I stitched around just to make it a bit more interesting. And then these kind of labels that you find, if they're small enough you can stick them onto your tags and they look interesting, you could stamp over them, you could use different colours, that's just the start. And then if you've got sort of small images and some of the words from the very beginning pages, you could stick those on and pop a nice little eyelet in there so that you've got a finish that has that kind of a look on it. Um, so there are plenty of ideas with that. Lovely textured fabric here. Nice sort of almost tapestry look. Okay, here are different snacky kind of foods which are really nice. So look at this. This is been designed to wrap around as a napkin band but wouldn't this just make most brilliant belly bands um, so that's where my mind goes with that um, yeah lovely fragrances and things to fussy cut if you wanted to paper crafts great skill with those that are able to do it really amazing stuff but whoa wouldn't these make lovely little stamps postage stamps that you could mount onto something else and there are a whole load of them Okay, text I keep. Okay, I cut out a lot of things, I use it as backgrounds, I do all sorts of things with the text and I do really find it's very useful. I would fussy cut that out, maybe some of these images and then use the text for the rest and maybe use that as a border for something else. So when you've got narrow little strips of um, printed images, you could do something like that. That was a narrow strip. I did some little embroidery stitches, just running stitches around that, a little bit of washi tape, stuck it on a second background colour, and this was just a piece of watercolour dyed book page, and um, popped a little eyelet in. So something very sort of simple could become something a whole lot more fun. Right. Okay, some Valentine's ideas, but again, lots of lovely borders, different kinds of colors, different kinds of textures. Don't discard them. Look at them, not as a whole image, but break them up and just say, could that be a tag? Um, could that be a, a postage stamp? Have a look at them differently. This is rather fun, an old-fashioned shop. I remember when I was a child, there was a corner cafe, and um, it was actually over the road from us, which was rather nice. And we used to have to go up to the counter and we used to have to ask them at the counter to fetch everything that were on the shelves behind us. It wasn't a question of walking up and down the aisles, but I loved it. And my one relative lived in a small country home, uh, in a small country town. And I loved those stores there because they catered 
with different kinds of stock for country people and yeah really really interesting things i remember once looking for a little brown teapot because those were quite popular in south africa just enough to make one pot of tea and that was where i found it okay lovely images to to work with if you're working on a vintage theme and if you're looking for nice images if you go into any of those genealogy um websites you can often find really old script in that you just have to check the copyright but i'm sure if you printed it for your own use you'd be able to use that otherwise in the libraries you might find things storage ideas for clothes we always need that don't we storage ideas for anything especially if you're a crafter <laughs> Starny cinnamon, all sorts of lovely different kinds of warm drinks for this time of the year. Lovely blues. Um, you can pick up nice themes. Great talent in being able to engrave in the paint here. Um, almost looks a little bit like a carved piece of lino, but it's not. Um, so we'll always have a page that's got nice stickers that were done for a few of you bought the planner for the year from Daphne's diary and then each issue will have recipe cards and for those of you that like cooking you would be able to pop those out but for those of you who don't like cooking take all these borders and make them into tags and sentiments and things like that. These two are Valentine's cards, um, old fashioned kind of ones. I'm not mad about them myself per se but I would certainly use the background. Um, I prefer the colours on the side of the page, so there's something for everybody. And that is what the card would look like once it's finished. I think I was in that place with those very sort of Victorian things many years ago, but not now. Alright, jewellery, making miniature works of art. Oh, I see little postage stamps here. Um, quite nice textures and colours as well. Travel things. Now, how often do you see a piece of card that this that's this color? So if you were not to use any of these images and only use this, you would get a nice pop of color that wouldn't necessarily be easy to find. This is a spot the difference thing, but you could add your own things into that and use it as a cover. Yeah, I've seen quite a lot of lemons in previous issues, so that's a theme that comes through quite a lot, and that's really nice because you can actually do something with that a little bit later if you save them. Images with transport also, strangely enough, come up. And what else have we got here? More Valentine's goodies. Yes, it is that time of the year, isn't it? I think also of those people who don't have someone that can share them love, then, you know, we could maybe make a nice card for them. Right, lots of lovely, oh hang on, I think I've missed a page. Ah, oh, vintage fashion designer, design your own. Well, you could have fun with that page, I'm sure. <laughs> this has got lots and lots and lots you could use. Small little images, text, lovely little floral backgrounds. Look at these, so charming little journals already done up. Paper crafts, okay, we love book pages. If you're doing any junk journals and ephemera, we love that, so... Um, yeah, always looking for great ideas. Little puffy clouds, they would make great tags or embellishments. And you've got two pages of them, depending on the colours you want. This is the insert that comes, which I love the colours of it. I'm not mad about the design because it's just not something that resonates with me. But I would certainly be able to fussy cut out a lot of stuff here and be able to use some of that colour um, for some of the things I'm doing. I don't know if you can see it all, it's a really big piece of paper, so I mean I would be able to fussy cut out the little fish and things like that and not use them as an astrological chart, but just as individual images. And then let's see what we've got here. Wooden spoons. I have a friend near where I live and she's the most amazing person. She's legally blind, although she just gets up and walks around without her stick most of the time. But in her front garden, she's got all the wooden spoons, all with different faces and things. It started off as a project with her grandchildren decorating wooden spoons. And over the years, people have come and said, oh, can we, we've decorated a spoon. Can we add it to your garden? And she very graciously says yes. So she's known as the spoon lady, but they really are beautifully decorated. So there's something to be said for that funny idea that she had. Um, I love this little image of this duck. I think it would make a lovely cover for um, a book. You could fussy cut it out or use it on its own. 
And then it was a bit torn because there were nice images on this side as well. So one would have to think carefully how you're going to do it. Or maybe scan that in and just make a copy for yourself. Um, just remember that the magazine is copyrighted so you would only be able to do that for your own use, not for resale. Making cheese, I've done that. Um, I had two litres of milk one day and I thought I can't waste this, it had gone off. And this one says that you work with rennet um, to make it. So this is two litres of milk, a pinch of salt and two teaspoons of liquid rennet. But my recipe was two litres of milk. You bring the milk to the boil and then when it's boiled you take it off the stove and for each litre you add one tablespoon of white vinegar. And then what happens is the milk curdles and it separates. So you're left with the whey and the milk and you put that into um, a sieve that's been lined with a bit of cheesecloth and you drain it and squeeze the water out and then you're left with these sort of chunks, chunky cottage cheese and you need to add a little bit of salt, you can add a bit of cream, you could add a bit of olive oil, whatever other kind of flavours you want and honestly it was the most delicious um, cottage cheese we call it in South Africa, cream cheese they call it here or soft cheese. It was the best I'd ever tasted. I didn't use a thermometer and um, fancy things. It was literally the, the milk, the vinegar and some seasoning. And it was amazing. And I got a whole lot. I mean, I really got a lot. Okay, lovely travel maps here. Always useful, aren't they? Love the imagery. I wish we could have holidays more often. Right, so this page I thought I had to show you a few things. We have a similar page each issue with lots of little images and in the past I have taken the cover of the Daphne's Diary magazine and I've put it onto another piece with some borders from a page and then just stitched around there and I've made this that could go onto a page and then this little image here I cut off that bookmark over this side and I've glued that onto this page with just a bit of coloured cardstock there, so I've got a nice tuck spot and I would be able to do that and stick that in. Then I had a different one to that, but I made a little tag out of it and I left that paper ribbon as part of it. So I've got that. This little section here, which had the bookmark and the paint tags, I've made into a big tag like that and I'll probably stick a piece of plain colored paper at the back so I could use that as a journal card and then that cover I just stuck onto a piece of card and just stitched at the top and the bottom just also to make a little journal for a tuck cup spot so don't waste that there's plenty to do these would make also lovely little images for stamps and things and let's see what we have at the back ah oh, look at this Oh my word, I get so excited when something like this because I just want to make it immediately. So what a wonderful way to use up china. They've stacked it to make sort of sculptural pieces for a vase, for a candle holder. There's another candle holder. I would like to make something like that as a bird feeder with seeds at the top perhaps. Um, yeah, you could make candles in the teacups and put them on top. What a lovely idea. Alright, these next pages are um, printed sheets that you could use to wrap up chocolate or you could actually just use the back pieces on their own, they're plain. But that's rather a nice idea just to personalise something. Um, a book review and the back page which is always really nice. This is fairly um, undecorative, this page, which is yeah it's a little bit unusual but it is nice because it gives you these lovely snowflakes just show you a few other little things that I've made I've taken some smaller images just stuck them onto card a little bit of a wash at the back to make a belly band a little bit of stitching with running stitches and a bit of washi tape and a button a couple of beads on there just to start off the ephemera you know sometimes you're just sitting at you just want to do something but you haven't actually got a firm theme this I've started off um, it could be a tag it could be a belly button this was from a previous magazine with a little fairy that I just also stuck waiting to see what happens a pair of little scissors and as I mentioned to you before we often have the paint brushes almost every image everything has a paintbrush this I made as a little tuck spot and I'm not sure how this will fit in Right, so I had one of the brushes and the other, so I could be able to slide that in and out of there. 
this was from the very beginning page it has all the page numbers just the index and I cut that out and I will probably put some wording there this one possibly maybe into a little book of some sort just with some notebook paper in well my friends thank you for joining me on this adventure and it is just lovely to have some beautiful things to play with again and I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you next time bye for now